Danger, do not touch. Yeah, okay. I saw the sign. We're now at the Pink Palace Museum. Clarence Saunders, who opened the world's first self-serve grocery store, where um, previously you gave your order to the grocery clerk and he would go and basically pick up everything he wanted and bring it back to you. Well, Clarence Saunders had the wonderful idea and he opened a store called Piggly Wiggly, where you actually went in and you actually picked your own groceries and then when you were finished you went to the front to pay uh, to pay the clerk on the checkout counter so it's quite uh, innovation at the time because everybody does it now but uh, before you know it Piggly Wigglies are opening up all over America um, there's no reason rhyme or reason why he chose the name Piggly Wiggly some say well I said some say it was just that for that very reason that people keep asking why do you call it Piggly Wiggly and it stick in people's minds but but when uh, but it whatever happened it worked because they opened all over America and there's still Piggly Wigglies all over America although the original one in Memphis on Jefferson has long gone so anyway he bought this yeah he bought land here and started building this mansion and it was called Pink Palace but before Clarence Saunders actually got to live in it uh, he had uh, some bad business advice or whatever and uh, basically lost it lost control of Piggly Wiggly and basically had to sell the house which was uh, eventually donated to the city it's now a museum start the mansion itself um, the lady in the box office said they're going to be closing it off for a private event shortly so she advises us to go in the mansion first yeah yeah it looks like them they've built this museum on the side and back of the mansion so there's the end of the original palace there that's the pink palace you can't see the pink there is, there is a can't pink see the pinkiness in it yeah there's a pink to it don't know if it's coming out on the camera but uh, elaborate, yeah god help you never got to live in it Country store. No, this this isn't the Piggly Wiggly, is it? This is the country store, which is a different thing. People came here to socialise as well, not, not just to shop. Uh, Piggly Wiggly. Shoppers entered the store through a turnstile into a single aisle where they had to move forward through the maze of shelves past every item in the store to reach the checkout and exit turnstile. At the register, customers paid in cash and carried their purchases home. They could not barter with a salesman or buy on credit as they could in country stores. The store design led to the rise of impulse buying. Goods with appealing package design, national brands and advertised products had an advantage because the goods had to sell themselves. Saunders saved money by having fewer overhead costs and no unpaid customer bills. He passed these savings on to his customers by offering lower prices than his competitors. So coming through the turnstile and then you, you're forced to uh, forced to go up the aisle and uh, choose your produce. That's cool. Del Monte, they had Del Monte even then. Uh, Stockholm. 
post toast post toasties corn flakes. Is that Kellogg's toasted corn flakes? Yeah. We have to come up to the headquarters on Front Street in Memphis. Jello. He opened um, after after he lost this business. Piggly Wiggly, uh, he, he tried another sort of innovation with it. It probably says it in here, something like Cadoozle or something. It's like a, like shopping by vending machine. What's the fridge? I don't think it was anything to do with the, this business. I think he tried to invest it or something oh, in, a, in something else. That's cool. Piggly Wiggly. Yeah, they changed the rules to benefit the speculators. So. I listed it on the stock exchange. Yeah, he made money the first time, but then when he tried to buy it all back, they changed the rules in in the benefit the speculators and not him. He lost all his money, so he bamboozled him, you know? mm. he pushed him into a corner. Yeah. Which wasn't that was the Memphis Blues, WC Handy. That was the first published blues recording. Uh, it was Mr. Crump. It was Mr. It was Edward Crump's uh, mayoral ca um, campaign song or tune. WC Handy then reimagined as Memphis Blues and had it published in 1913. Sandy's trumpet. Uh, Johnny Holiday figure. Ooh, don't take drugs off him, do you? No. It's a purple hat, do you know? Oh, this is probably the drugstone. Oh, this display area was the public part of the drugstore. Oh. <coughs> Turn of the century was often the community showplace with its tile floor and its ornate lamps, mirrors and marble soda fountain. The shelves were loaded with colourful bottles and show globes and the air was filled with curious aromas. The supply of patent medicines seemed endless, each label claiming to cure what ailed you. Temporarily closed, taking things down by Arthur N. Cecil, South Second Street. <laughs> the doctor's yeah, office. He's got a jolly face, I don't mind him. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what this is going to come out like. I've had to switch cameras and I used up both batteries this morning. Yeah, that, doc that doctor's got the look of Walter Matthau about him, hasn't he? I'm just going <laughs> to. Oh, this is the yellow fever epidemic, this was. Yeah. Sisters of St. Mary, 1878. In the 1878 epidemic, these sisters operated a small infirmary for sick clergy and physicians. They also took on the operation of Canfield Asylum, an orphanage for black children, as well as caring for the church home children. Four of the sisters died of yellow fever. There's quite a few outbreaks of yellow fever. There's one, a nasty one in 1873 as well, but 1878 was the big one. Howard Associations, they were the ones who were set up and uh, stayed in Memphis to care for the sick and dying. Of course, so many of them died themselves. I was a little chart just showing the population of Memphis in the epidemic. 60% of the population fled Memphis. 40% stayed and of these 90% got the fever. Many recovered, few escaped the fever and over 5,000 died. Walter Reed is a uh, lot to thank him for. He discovered that it was the mosquito that uh, spread the fever, spread the virus, not uh, 
not just poor sanitation. Didn't help, of course. But He's cutting his leg off because he lost half his foot. Oh. What did he do? Obviously leaned over. <laughs> Back in Memphis, shortly after the fair, June 1862. See the pinkly wiggly store? Yes, yeah, five was library. <laughs> and they got some good um, good exhibits of the, yeah, the Civil, Civil War. War and Yellow Fever. Yeah, it's good. It's good, enjoyable. Yeah, it was alright. 